Hello, and welcome back to our, the next in our series of the Gems of the al Sheikh, when we're working through extracts from the, the great treasure house of the, the wisdom and the genius of the al Sheikh al-Qadish. We're at the Sedra, the last Sedra, in the, in the hall of the Mimur, and the Sedra is Maasai. And the Sedra of Maasai um, is the journeys of the Jewish people. When the tower at the end sums up all the journeys from all the because now they're about to go into the land of Israel. So 40 years is, is coming to an end. Um, and now we're going to uh, have a reflection on the, the journeys and, and what was involved there. So if you look in the beginning of the center, it's chapter Lamed Gimel in the Midbar, verse 1. Eli Masa ben Israel. I'm using our, our article. Eli Masa ben Israel. These are the, the journeys of the Jewish people. Ashar Yatsa in Eretz Israel, who went out from Egypt. The Savasam in their formations, the Yad Moshe of Aaron um, at, the, at the hand, or through the hand of Moses and Aaron. Now remember, the, the technique of the Alshik is to spot words that don't seem to make any sense, because our golden rule from our very first uh, uh, little video was that God's good at Hebrew, and even though it sounds flippant and almost silly, but it's a serious point. All the commentators, Rashi and all the rest, uh, they make their comment based on the fact, or sourced on the fact that something that seems wrong with the verse. And certainly something wrong here, because it says, again, these are the journeys of the Jewish people, Asher Yatsim Eshashan, who went out from Egypt. Well, of course they did. We know that. Why does it have to say that? That's pretty obvious. Um, and then, of course, what we should say is, these are the journeys of the Jewish people, and then leap to what it says in verse 3. They went from Ramses in the first three in the first month, but and when it was in the seventeenth of the month, and then they went to etc. Et and then go on to the rest of the story. Why does it take time off to remind us of the rather obvious fact that they left Egypt? That uh, we know that bit. So I want to read you what the Al Sheikh says here. So Al Sheikh, um, he says, "Omnum, hine omnum rabbi say nizal." The rabbi say, and give uh, this is a in the Medrash Rabbah. They give a motion. It's a marshal about a father and a son. Of course, it's about a king and a son, I know. Um, it's about time that we started updating our marshals, particularly for uh, Americans who don't have kings. It all sounds a bit strange. But you get the idea. There was a king or a father with a son. Let's keep it a father and a son. Father and the son went on a journey. It was a long journey. There were many incidents along the way. Some of the incidents were not pleasant. And he writes here, interestingly, um, that in actual fact, this journey, these journeys, this 40 years, in the majority of the places where they stopped and camped, sometimes for a few days, sometimes for years, but in almost every single instance, it was unpleasant. There was a rebellion, or there was some sort of catastrophe that occurred there, which, as it were, was an invitation for the Jewish people to spot and see what was going wrong with them that would lead for this thing to, to break out. It's every, every, every... Uh, incident of challenge and test that the Jewish people either failed or succeeded in points to where the strengths or weaknesses lie and you can learn from that. So he says the following thing, if there was the father, go back to our Moshe, the father and the son, if the father, once they reach the end of their journey, when he goes reflects in his mind, as he obviously would, about the time when his son was in a certain place and that went wrong and how upsetting it was to him, and then another place and there was another disaster, etc. So a father would do that for his son after the end of the journey, think of all the things that, you know, when I maybe nearly lost him. Similarly, Hashem's doing that here. In the summing up of the journey of the Jewish people, it's a father reflecting on where his son went wrong, but uh, ultimately they're about to get into the land of Israel, take possession, the gift of Hashem, of the land of Israel. And therefore, it's appropriate for Hashem to start off by saying why, even though they fell, they deserve still to get into the land of Israel. And that's because they have times when they succeeded enormously in their in their mission. Remember, every every incident can be, whether you succeed or you fail, can be a pointer of what you need to work on or what you need to increase that you're already successful at. And the first one is, of course, the fact that the Jewish people were, were willing to leave the land of Israel. That's why it says at the beginning, Eli Master and Israel, these are the journeys of the Jewish people, who left the the land of Egypt. Well, we know that. No, no, it's telling you something. That there is intrinsically in the Jewish people worth, promise, potential, even when I, even when you let ourselves down, uh, individually or collectively, there is worth. 
and therefore as a consequence of that the father was wanting to take his son to the next journey even if they let themselves down and this is an idea the Alsha <coughs> excuse me repeats several times uh, when he says that there's a, a, a rule that the Talmud says that normally a tzaddik a, a saintly person is protected by God even to the extent that if he has cattle if he owns a sheep or some sheep uh, or he owns a cow or two that they will not accidentally stick their heads through a fence and graze in his neighbor's field therefore the tzaddik is his cow is stealing his neighbor's grass so if a god protects even the animals of a, of a really special holy person why didn't protect the whole jewish people who were a holy nation when they came out from egypt and allowed them to make the golden calf or allowed them to make the mistake that would lead to the golden calf why wasn't the one voice raised against this project and it wasn't and the answer is that God, Hashem, withdrew his protection from the Jewish people, which leaves you scratching your head. Think of the cow. He protects a cow from eating the neighbor's grass. He wouldn't stop the Jewish people from making this disastrous decision. And the Talmud also says, uh, quoting uh, the Asha quotes, the story of King David. Are you seriously telling me that the holy, and he really was a holy man, King David, saw an attractive woman and he couldn't withstand the temptation? That's the story of King David and Bathsheba which led to even, even if it reverberates today, uh, critics of Judaism and, and Jewish figures like to point to King David and, and the bloodthirsty, horrible king who was there. Um, and the answer to both of these, says the Talmud, is that if you live in a generation in which the Jewish people seem collectively to be, I uh, can't think of any other phrase, but no good, to be failed, failed in their mission, failed, and they're old, they're worn out, they're uh, vivacity, the freshness is long gone, and you might think there is no chance for us in such a situation. Don't forget, this is, there's a whole generation which Hashem offered or suggested that he was going to finish off completely. Or if you or I, as an individual, let ourselves down, feel bitterly ashamed, which can sometimes lead to you giving up altogether, you have no faith in yourself. Don't forget there was one individual, one of the most famous individuals in history certainly in Jewish history, King David, who did something which sort of resonates even today, echoes today, which the world say, ah, look at him, look at what he did, it was a heel of Hashem, he brought God's name into disrepute. Now God forgive him too. If God can forgive the Jewish people for making the golden calf and for King, forgive King David for what he did, then he can forgive our generation and he can forgive also the, the story of an individual you or I who might make a mistake. So this idea is something that echoes here, that yeah, the Jewish people made mistakes, but the going out from Egypt established that within us was something strong. Not all of us, four fifth decided to stay behind in Egypt, but for the fifth who left, you know, the real pain in the neck Jews, the stubborn Jews, the Jews who would uh, not change under any circumstances, whether the circumstances were destruction of a temple or two temples, an expulsion, um, oppression under a Roman Empire or a Persian Empire, if it was oppression under crusades, massacre and torture in the Spanish Inquisition, slaughter in the pogroms in Poland and Russia, or even Holocaust, the Jewish people would stubbornly plod on. And Hashem was with them all the way. That's why it says, I saw you, I was with you there. I saw you slipped up. I saw you made a mistake collectively or for individuals. I saw, but I was still there with you. And I recall all those times as we come to the end when we're coming now to cross the frontier of the border to take possession of your own land. It's a beautiful idea. Hashem was with us all the time. I once knew a Holocaust survivor. I know, sorry, I know a Holocaust survivor. She's called Mrs. Eva Newman, Bobby Newman, she's known as. Um, I wrote about her in my column of Amadea, and her son, and, uh, son, grandson, worked for Asia Tower in London, and eventually persuaded her to go back to Auschwitz, where she was as a girl, to lead a group of 200 young university students and tell her story. And she did so. I would never be able to do it myself. But anyway, they were in Auschwitz, and they came into a room where she was going to give her, her story, tell her story. And by an incredible coincidence, if we believe in that word at all, there was in the walls a 
group of photographs which are in the frame, which told a chronological, held a chronological, displayed a chron chronological record of an entire arrival of the train, transport full of Jews, their selection from those who would die, those who would, would live the selexia, the shaving of the heads, the wearing, stripping and wearing the pajama uniforms, being marched off, some to their deaths and some to slave labour. This had been found in the belongings, these pictures, and found in the belongings of an SS sergeant who passed away. His children gave it to the Auschwitz Museum. And even Newman walked in there with these hundred kids and looked at the pictures, and it was her. Her, as a 16, she was in almost every single picture. I have these pictures. <clears throat> there was a book published on it. You can see it. Her story is horrific. Her job in the camp was to uh, select, sort through the clothing of people who had been gassed. Once, um, she was going through the clothing of people who had just died, who had just been killed, been slaughtered in the gas chambers, and she found her mother's clothing, um, including in, the, in a pocket, her, oh, a lock of her own hair, which her mother had cut as a baby and kept. Um, she said at the end of my interview for her, people say, where was God during the Holocaust? And she said, and she could say, with an authority that I could never, he was with me. In this center, the journeys of the Jewish people from place to place. Shem's recalling it. I was with you all the time. Shem's always with us. And very soon, Mr. Shem will bring all of us into our, across that frontier, across that border, to rebuild the temple of the Herbig. 